Hey everyone, Lacey Green here. Welcome to our new series, D News. I thought we'd kick things off with a cheerful topic today, murder and deadly diseases. Like, say, swine flu. That was a thing for a while, right? When swine flu hit the population, it spiked in certain areas and then it tapered off as it moved to nearby regions. Chaos and madness everywhere as people tried to figure out who's next. When an infectious disease hits a new area, it isn't random. It hits the area most vulnerable to catching the disease, which allows it to keep infecting more and more people. If you have an area that's full of strong, healthy people, and an area that's full of sickly, weak people, the flu is gonna hit the sickly people because they're not as able to ward it off. It turns out that murder might work kind of the same way. After observing Newark, New Jersey for 26 years, researchers are saying, uh, hey guys, this little murder pattern kind of looks like a contagious disease. At first, there were a bunch of people killing each other over in the center of the city, but now they're killing each other over here in the west and the south of the city. The idea of violence being contagious is actually nothing new. It's like the old saying goes, violence only causes more violence. And when you're living in an area where there's a lot of crime and violence, people are scared. And what do scared people do? They buy guns and weapons and they do what they have to to protect themselves. And living in a place with a lot of violence for a long time kind of numbs people out. You become desensitized because you have to, to cope with the dysfunction that's all around you. And when you're desensitized and the people around you are doing it, you get swept up in that storm. Bam, violence causing more violence. So saying violence does move like a disease. What is it about the West and the South of Newark that made those communities more vulnerable? What's so special about the North and the East that managed to protect them from catching the murder disease? The areas of Newark that had the lowest levels of violence have a higher concentration of immigrants. People are a little wealthier there, and the area is more diverse. The areas with the high murder rates are plagued with poverty. They're also a little more racially homogenous. So, who's surprised that poverty is a risk factor for more violence? Just looking at our history and the world around us illustrates a really tragic relationship between poverty and violence. Some people tend to think that diversity will actually cause more violence, but in Newark, we're seeing that the opposite is true. So the question is, what's the vaccine for this disease? Could it actually be more diversity? Is it more jobs and opportunities? Is it gun control maybe? I don't know. This is a complicated question with complicated answers, probably. But I wanna know what y'all think about it. Let me know down below, and hey, don't forget to subscribe so that you can get our next D News update.